In this video, we're going to be using plasticity to make a 3D printed phone stand, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to be using plasticity for 3D printing. Now, this is going to be a fairly simple example. The geometry is not very complex but we're gonna talk about the workflow of designing your parts for 3D printing. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started by going to my preferences. We wanna make sure that we understand the units that we're modeling in. So we'll go to grid and units, and I'm gonna set mine to inch, and then just simply click out of the area. Notice that it rescales the cube, so the cube has gotten quite a bit larger relative to our grid. I'm gonna zoom in, select the cube, and hit delete. What we're going to be making is a desktop cell phone stand, something that I can put my phone on sideways, sitting in front of me, and I can have something on the screen if needed. So what I'm going to be doing is starting by modeling the rough approximation of the phone. We're going to use a corner rectangle, start at the origin, and as we drag this out, something that has changed in this version, which is 1.1, is we can no longer hit tab to go from a center to a corner rectangle. We have to hit C on the keyboard. Then I'm going to hit tab, to go to my dimensions, and the rough approximation of my phone is gonna be six inches by three inches. So we'll tab to those boxes and hit enter twice. So we can see from the grid and the scale that the part is actually quite a bit smaller, so we need to zoom in quite a bit, select it, and then I'm gonna begin pulling this up, manually enter a value of 0.5 inches. This is, again, a rough approximation of the size of the phone with the case on. I don't need the curve anymore, so I'm gonna select and delete it, I'm going to add some fillets to the corners just so we can round this thing off. I'm going to do that by holding down Control to select each corner. You can also do this by holding down Shift and then pull it away to get my fillets. Right click. I'm going to do the same thing. Pull it away to add some small rounds. Select the top. Hit O for offset. Right click and then just pull this down a little bit so it looks like a screen. So now that we've got the basic shape of the phone, I'm gonna go into perspective mode. I like to look at my designs in perspective mode a little bit better. And I'm gonna select the phone. I'm gonna hit number three on my numpad. So that way I'm going to an orthographic view from the right side. And I wanna rotate it into the position that I want. So I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard. We're gonna be rotating about X. So I could hit X on the keyboard or I can manually rotate this around. If you want a specific degree amount, so for example, if you wanted it at 50 degrees, manually hit 50 degrees, and it looks like it's not quite enough, so I'm gonna go all the way up to 60, and then hit enter to okay. Now I'm gonna use G on the keyboard, and I wanna move this up in Z. But as we're looking at the grid from the right side, you'll notice that I have an X and a Y axis, and those axes are going to be just for the 2D view, the orientation of this construction plane. So if I hit Z on the keyboard, it's gonna allow me to move this up in Z. Now this is gonna be, again, the position of the phone, so we'll right click and we'll say okay. While we're still on this right view, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I'm gonna start my line tool. I wanna to give a basic shape, so what we're gonna be doing is creating just a basic stand. Again, 3D printing, we're using a desktop FDM machine, or FFF. So we're gonna have something that's just a simple extrusion from the side, easy to print, no supports. That'll be great for us. So I would need to start with the front edge and determine how I want to build this design. So I'm gonna start from the Y axis. I'm gonna come up at some angle, doesn't really matter what it is. And then I want to go parallel to this edge. So I'm gonna tap shift and notice that it gives me my parallel extension lines. I'm going to hover over one of the back edges, tap shift, and again, it gives me my parallel extension lines. I'm going to come about halfway up the phone, right click to accept that line. Now, I'm going to select the line tool again. I'm going to bring this back, and this is going to be the support. Again, it's going to be more of a floating mount, right click to accept, shift, select both of these, and hit J on the keyboard to join them together. Now we have a single curve. With the single curve, I can hit B on the keyboard, which will enable the fillet and I wanna round these corners off. Gonna left click, then right click to accept. And now with it still selected, I'm gonna hit O, and this is gonna allow me to offset. And you can determine how thick you want this to be. If we hit tab, 
Nothing is going to happen but locking the distances. You can see it's going in both directions. If I hit tab again, it only goes in a single direction. So if we want a very specific dimension, we need to look in the bottom left dialog and notice that in one direction it's positive, in the other direction it's negative. What I'm going to do is put in a negative 0.125 inches, hit enter. The dialog is still active, so we can make changes to this dimension if needed, but eighth of an inch is going to be plenty strong for what we need. Then I'll right click and say OK. Using the line tool again, we want to finish off the edges. Also note that we can do a repeat command. So if I hit F to find and I look for repeat, notice that edit repeat last command is shift and R. So if you're using the line tool over and over again or any tool, you can use shift and R to just repeat that last command. Also note that line is shift and A. What we're going to do is shift select all of our curves and then J to join them together. Now the main reason that I might want to do this is if I want to round these edges off, so I can hit B, and again, it's going to take any square edges, and it's going to allow me to round them off. I can do this directly here with this curve. Now, we're not quite done. I think I want to add a little bit of a lip to the front to prevent the bottom of the phone from sliding out. So I'm going to start my line tool. Again, Shift and A if you want, or you can click over here. And I want this to be perpendicular, and you'll notice that it automatically does that with doing the normal. And then I'm going to come over, and again, I want this to be perpendicular, but notice that it's snapping to horizontal. If I tap Shift here, it'll give me that perpendicular reference. And I'm going to bring this down, and I want it to be tangent. So I'm going to find the position where it's tangent, right-click, and now we've got that closed profile. If we want to, we can trim this. doesn't really matter because we can select both profiles. And then we're going to rotate this around, and I want to begin pulling this out. I need to figure out how big it needs to be, and looks like maybe inch and a quarter should be fine. I'm going to hit tab and do minus 1.25 to go in the other direction and hit enter, then hit enter again. I don't need the curves, but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and hide them in case I want to go back and maybe make another extrude. Now, as I'm looking at this, I think I want some more support under here, but the front position here, this looks like it's a little too high. So we'll just make some edits, pull it down. Just needs to be a very small lip. Right click to accept. And that looks pretty good. So the next thing that I want to do before I round off those corners there is I want to add another support underneath here. That's support just to prevent this thing from rocking too much in here. We're going to go ahead and go back to three on the number pad, which is a side. And again, the line tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just extend this edge down. So we'll click there, I'm going to come back, tap shift, tap shift on this line, and we'll find the intersection. Right click to accept, shift and A for the line again, or shift and R to repeat the last command. We'll come up here, again, tap shift, tap shift down here, and that will allow me to create that extension. Shift and A for the line, or shift and R for repeat. Right click, and now we've got that close profile. So what we want to do is take this, and we need to extrude it. Notice that because we snapped to geometry, we're not actually on the true YZ plane. We're not looking at it from the right. It ended up over here. Now, that's something that I've mentioned in other videos with the basics or getting started. But anytime we're looking from those default views, what we're going to end up having is a sketch or curves that are parallel to that plane but they're going to be at the selected snap location since we started by snapping to geometry. But what we want to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and hit F for freestyle, select this one edge and select this other edge, and we can union these while we're here. We could hit Q and select that main body, right click, and then get rid of this curve by selecting and hitting delete on all of those. So we were able to add to it, but now we want to add some fillets. So we're going to select this inside edge here, We'll select these other edges as well and begin pulling them out to round those corners off. Last thing that we want to do is potentially round these corners off. So I'm going to hide the phone for right now. This is going to be a fairly small fillet here. So I'm going to pull that one out first, right click to accept, and then we'll do this one here. Now, as we're looking at this, the top may be too high. And even though we added these fillets, all I have to do is select that face and pull it down. Right click to accept. We'll look at this again from the side. And we can see that 
it probably doesn't need to be that tall. That little bit of a catch on the front and it'll be a point contact here would probably hold the phone just fine. But I think I wanna raise it back up just in case. I'd hate to print this out and have it not work. So I'm gonna raise it back up just a little bit. Right click to accept. And the main thing I wanna do is just avoid where the cameras are. And I got a little bit more room. And right click to accept. So now that we have our design, and we haven't saved yet, let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna call this my cell stand. And I'm gonna hide the solid body. I'm gonna just select this body here. And we're gonna to go to export save as, and I'm gonna save it as an STL file. Now I've already done this once. I'm gonna go ahead, this is slightly different since it's just built on the fly. I'm gonna go ahead and just call this my cell stand. Then we have some STL export options. Notice that there are some toggles that are on by default based on tolerance angles and the density. For this, we have a lot of flat faces. These large triangles are gonna be fine for what we need. And I'm gonna right click and okay that. Now that we have that, I need to open up a slicer that I'm gonna use. Now for me, I'm using a Creality Ender 7. So I'm just gonna open up the Creality slicer. You can open up the Prusa slicer or whatever you're using. If you're slicing this in Fusion 360, then it makes more sense actually to just model it there, honestly. But if you're using plasticity and you wanna model something for 3D printing, the most common thing is to send it out to whatever slicer you're using. So we're gonna open this. I'm gonna open up my cell stand, which is the one I just saved. And I want to rotate this around 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna do this here. Let's go ahead and put that back to zero and grab the green one. We'll rotate it 90 degrees, rotate this around. And now we should be able to print this without supports. We do need to make sure that we check our settings. I'm gonna print this in low quality, which is 0.28 between each uh, sort of slice or trace line. And that's perfectly fine, the quality is good. And we also have to think about the orientation of our part. Printing in this way means that the weakest point of the 3D print, the layer lines, is not going to be essentially loaded when we put a phone on this thing. Now that just essentially means that this is the strongest orientation. This is also how it was designed. So the 0.28 is perfectly fine. Infill amount at 20%, we really could print this solid. It's just gonna take a bit more time to print. So I'm gonna slice it and see hour 23 if we're printing 20% infill. I'm gonna preview this and take a look just to see what this looks like. And it looks like three traces on the outside with a little bit of infill in these corners. And I think that's gonna be perfectly fine for this design. I don't really need it to be totally solid. So I'm gonna be okay with that at 20% infill and 0.28 for my profiles. So I'm gonna save this to removable and go ahead and print it. So let's go ahead and get it started on the printer and we'll take a look at this thing when it's done. <laughs> So after the 3D print, everything appears to be working just fine. There are obviously changes that could be made. If I wanted to use it in both orientations of the phone, I would need to make the base a little bit longer or potentially add a secondary hook or section on the lower front portion so that the phone could be laying down a bit more. But overall, it works for the intention. I wanted to have the phone sideways and it does seem to work just fine for that. So now I can put it on my desk or bring it with me wherever I need to just to simply set the phone down so that way I can have it at a perfect viewing angle. So this was just a basic look at how to create a 3D printed part with plasticity. There are a couple of cautions that I wanna give you. One, make sure that you are familiar with the units that you're modeling in. By default, it's gonna be meter. So in this instance, we ended up changing it to inches. And then also double check the scale when you do bring it into your slicer. Now, in my case, the Creality slicer automatically scaled it for me, but in some cases you might find that your part is wildly out of scale. So just double check, make sure that your part is getting scaled appropriately for whatever you're designing. But that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.